Welcome back to Transcriber from Reddit. Today's topic comes from the subreddit Recruiting Hell, posted by user CostHab87. This was posted eight days ago as of recording this video. The post contains text and images with the title New Hire Died Cause of Work Pressure. Here, Cuz, short for because, is spelled C-O-Z. The text reads as follows. This story needs to reach as many as possible. The country does not matter here because it is the same story throughout the world. People talk about dream jobs in Big Four, but when Anna joined a Big Four, the toxic work culture cost her her life. This is the sad reality. Scrolling down to the images, there are four images total. The first one is of the deceased, known as Anna Sebastian Perayil, spelled P-E-R-A-Y-I-L. Here, her screenshot comes from her LinkedIn, where she posted roughly five months ago saying, I'm happy to share that I'm starting a new position as Audit and Assurance Executive at EY. Below that is an image of some confetti that says below it, starting a new position. When she initially posted on LinkedIn, this it had 98 reactions to it and 36 comments. Moving over to the second screenshot. Here, the second image is a screenshot also of her LinkedIn, in this case, her LinkedIn profile. It has in purple next to her name, in remembrance. Her location is listed as Kachi, Kerala, India, and she was working for the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. Below that, we see her 500 plus connections. And below that, we see in purple, again, in memory of Anna Sebastian Parayil. This account has been memorialized as a tribute to Anna Sebastian Parayil's professional legacy. Excuse me, professional legacy. From what we can see from her about section, we see that she has listed as a chartered accountant, I have over three years of experience in taxation, statutory audits, internal audits, and due diligence for various clients across different sectors. Continuing on, but the screenshot doesn't show that here. Side note, you might be asking yourself, what could cause someone like this, someone who would be primarily working with books and numbers, what could cause them to lose their life in such a fashion? Let's move on to the third image. Here, the third image shows a screen grab of a PDF. Here, we see the first page and part of the second page of this PDF file. When we tap on it to zoom closer, we see that it is a letter. It's from Anita Augustine, mother of late Ms. Anna Sebastian Parayil, to Rajiv Mimani, excuse me, Rajiv Mimani, EY India Chairman. She writes, Dear Rajiv, I am writing this letter as a grieving mother who has lost her precious child, Anna Sebastian Pryo. My heart is heavy and my soul is shattered as I pen these words, but I believe it is necessary to share our story in the hope that no other family will have to endure the pain we are going through. Anna passed her CA exams in November 23 and joined EY, Pune on March 19th. 2024 as an executive. She was full of life, dreams, and excitement for the future. 
EY was her first job, and she was thrilled to be part of such a prestigious company. But four months later, on July 20th, 2024, my world collapsed when I received the devastating news that Anna had passed away. She was just 26 years old. Anna was always a fighter, from childhood through her academic years, where she excelled in everything she did. She was a school topper and a college topper, excuse me, and a college topper, excelled in extracurricular activities, and passed her CA exams with distinction. She worked tirelessly at EY, giving her all to meet the demands placed on her. However, the workload, new environment, and long hours took a toll on her physically, emotionally, and mentally. She began experiencing anxiety, sleeplessness, and stress soon after joining, but she kept pushing herself, believing that hard work and perseverance were the keys to success. On Saturday, July 6th, my husband and I reached Pune to attend Anna's CA convocation, since she had been complaining of chest constriction upon reaching her PG late at night, parentheses around 1 a.m., and parentheses, for the past week, we took her to the hospital in Pune. Her ECG was normal, and the cardiologist came to allay our fears, telling us she wasn't getting enough sleep and was eating very late. He prescribed antacids, which reassured us that it wasn't anything serious, though we had come all the way from caught. Kachi, excuse me, from Kachi. She insisted on going to work after seeing the doctor, saying there was a lot of work to be done and she wouldn't get leave. That night, she returned to her PG late again. On Sunday, July 7th, the day of her convocation, she joined us in the morning, but she was working from home even that day until the afternoon, and we reached the convocation venue late. It was my daughter's great dream to take her parents to her convocation, with her own hard-earned money. She booked our flight tickets and took us. It breaks my heart to tell you that even during those two days, which were the last we would spend with our child, she couldn't enjoy them because of the work pressure. When Anna joined this specific team, she was told that many employees had resigned due to the excessive workload, and the team manager told her, excuse me, the team manager told to her, quote, Anna, you must stick around and change everyone's opinion about our team, end quote. My child didn't realize she would pay for that with her life. Her manager would often reschedule meetings during critic, excuse me, her manager would often reschedule meetings during cricket matches and assign her work at the end of the day, adding to her stress. At an office party, a senior leader even joked that she would have a tough time working under her manager which unfortunately became a reality she could not escape. Anna confided in us about the overwhelming workload, especially the additional tasks assigned verbally beyond the official work. I would tell her not to take on such tasks, but the managers were relentless. She worked late into the night, even on weekends, with no opportunity to catch her breath. Her assistant manager once called her at night with a task that needed to be completed by the next morning, leaving her with barely any time to rest or recover. When she voiced her concerns, she was met with a dismissive response, quote, you can work at night, that's what we all do, end quote. Anna would return to her room utterly exhausted, sometimes collapsing on the bed without even changing her clothes, only to be bombarded with messages asking for more reports. She was putting in her best efforts, working very hard to meet the deadlines. She was a fighter to the core, not someone to give up easily. We told her to quit, but she wanted to learn and gain new exposure. However, the overwhelming pressure proved too much, even for her. Now that ended the third image. Now we move on to the fourth image, again a screenshot of a PDF file. This appears to be the second half of that second page and the final and third page of the document. I continue reading. Anna would never have blamed her managers. She was too kind for that, but I cannot remain silent, burdening newcomers with such backbreaking work, making them work day and night, even on Sundays, has no justification whatsoever. She had just left her hometown and loved ones. Everything was new to her. 
the organization, the place, the language, and she was trying very hard to adjust. You should show some consideration to new employees. Instead, the management took full advantage of the fact that she was new and overwhelmed her with both assigned and unassigned work. This is a systemic issue that goes beyond individual managers or teams. The relentless demands and the pressure to meet unrealistic expectations are not sustainable, and they cost us the life of a young woman with so much potential. Anna was a young professional just starting her career. Like many in her position, she did not have the experience or the agency to draw boundaries or push back against unreasonable demands. She did not know how to say no. She was trying to prove herself in a new environment, and in doing so, she pushed herself beyond her limits, and now she is no longer with us. I wish I had been able to protect her, to tell her that her health and well-being mattered more than anything else, but it is too late for my Anna. I am writing to you now, Rajiv, because I believe EY has a profound responsibility to ensure the well-being of its employees. Anna's experience sheds light on a work culture that seems to glorify overwork while neglecting the very human beings behind the roles. This is not just about my daughter. It's about every young professional who joins EY, filled with hopes and dreams, only to be crushed under the weight of unrealistic expectations. I took the time to read EY's human rights statement, which is not linked here in the screenshot, but it shows that it's linked here in the document which bears your signature. I cannot reconcile the values expressed in that statement with the reality my daughter faced. How can EY begin to truly live by the values it professes? Anna's death should serve as a wake-up call for EY. It is time to reflect on the work culture within your organization and take meaningful steps to prioritize the health and wellness of your employees. This means creating an environment where employees feel safe to speak up, where they are supported in managing their workload, and where their mental and physical well-being is not sacrificed for the sake of productivity. No one from EY attended Anna's funeral. The, excuse me, this absence at such a critical moment for an employee who gave her all to your organization until her last breath is deeply hurtful. Anna deserved better, and so do all the employees who continue to work under these conditions. My heart aches not just for the loss of my child, but also for the lack of empathy shown by those who are supposed to guide and support her. After her funeral, I reached out to her managers, but I received no reply. How can a company that speaks of values and human rights fail to show up for one of its own in their final moments? Becoming a chartered accountant involves years of toil, hardship, and sacrifice, not only for the student, but also for the parents. Years of my child's hard work have been snuffed out by just four months of EY's callous attitude. I hope this letter reaches you with the gravity it deserves. I don't know if anyone can truly understand a mother's emotions when she lays rest to her child, the child she held in her arms, watch grow, play, cry, and share dreams with, unless they have experienced the same pain. I hope my child's experience leads to real changes so that excuse me, leads to real change so that no other family has to endure the grief and trauma we are going through. My Anna is no longer with us, but her story can still make a difference. Sincerely, Anita Augustine. Upon ending reading that fourth image, I want all of us here to take a moment of silence in honor of Anna. As of me recording this, it has 32,000 upvotes and over 1,000 comments. And it's been awarded six Diamond Awards. The top comment here, I believe, encapsulates it beautifully. 
user Valthor95 commented, I used to be like Anna and would work 60 to 70 hours per week, work on holidays, skip hanging out with friends, until I realized I was slowly killing myself, and if I died, I would be replaced within a matter of minutes. I tell everyone on my team, quote, unless your name is on the outside of the building, then there is no need for you to sacrifice your health over a job, end quote. I second that comment. I wish to tell everybody who I work with, not just now, but also in the future, that their health and well-being and their being able to be around family and interact with them is more important than sacrificing all of that health and ability to their job. Unfortunately, we don't do a good job of teaching our young people that these days. How do you set boundaries with your boss? How do you combat unrealistic expectations? What do unrealistic expectations look like? We're so busy pushing them through the grades, through school, through high school, to college, and through college, and push them to get access to all of these different opportunities and keep pushing them and pushing them so that they are prepared for what we see as an harsh, unde- harsh demanding work life and work experience outside of school. But we don't teach them what unrealistic expectations looks like and how to deal with bad bosses and bad managers. My heart goes out to Anna and her family. Now, a day later, in the same subreddit, there was posted a screenshot of EY India Head's email response to overworked employee's death, which coincidentally is also the title of the post. As of recording, it has eight, over 8,000 upvotes and 759 comments. However, the image that was there is currently showing with a red circle with a line through it, and the text next to that reads, Sorry, this post has been removed by the moderators of r slash recruiting hell. I don't understand why it would have been removed by the moderators. Fortunately, I was able to screen grab it, and I will show you that screen grab and read from it. Here we see the screen grab. This screen grab shows an email that was sent by Rajiv Mamani. We see in the circle next to his name a profile picture of him. Where it says to, we see it blank, possibly because it's in an organizational email thread or because it was blacked out. Either way, underneath it we see do not forward. Recipients can read this message but cannot forward, print, or copy content. The conversation owner has full permission to their message and all replies. Permission granted by rajiv.mani at in.ey.com. His email message reads as follows. Dear all, as you all would be aware since yesterday, several messages regarding our firm have been circulating on WhatsApp and other social media platforms. These pertain to the tragic passing away of Anna Sebastian on 20 July 2024, who joined us in our assurance team in Poon on 18 March 2024. The fact that her journey with the firm was so short-lived, only four months, makes this tragedy even more poignant for all of us. Anna hailed from Kachi and worked at our Poon office. During the difficult period following her passing, the firm was in regular contact with members of her family. While we acknowledge that no measure can compensate for the loss experienced by the family, we have provided all the assistance as we always do in such times of distress while respecting the family's privacy and preferences. 
Though no words can comfort a grieving family, I have personally expressed my condolences and have shared my deepest regret for their irreparable loss. I received an anguished email from Anna's mother and have taken note of her message with utmost seriousness and humility. I would like to reaffirm to all of you that our firm places the highest importance on the health and well-being of our people, and we will recommit ourselves to providing a supportive, healthy, and balanced work environment to you all. I would like to make this an ongoing dialogue with you to ensure we are continually building a healthy workplace for everyone. We have several well-being programs and open channels of communication available in the firm to ensure that you always have a safe space to voice your concerns anonymously, including through our existing Speak Up Forum and Ethics Hotline. Side note, both of which appear linked here on the email. I continue reading. We will also create more avenues for you to share transparent and honest feedback on our workplace practices. If you ever face challenges or need guidance, I will strongly encourage you to please reach out to your team leaders, members of the talent team, and your support network across the firm. I would like to personally assure you that when you speak up, you will be heard with empathy and understanding. If there are any suggestions that you have, please don't hesitate to let me know. In the meantime, I urge you to handle this information with the utmost compassion and sensitivity. Thank you for your understanding and cooperation. Warm regards, Rajiv. This is a very typical corporate response, and it is honestly, while not unexpected, extremely disgusting. They're not actually upset that a valued member of their team passed away after four months of being hired. They're upset at all of the pressure and all of the focus being placed on them and their awful work practices. And as for him talking about all of their importance on the health and well-being of their people and trying to provide a balanced work environment and all of their well-being programs and open channels of communication, how much is that actually being listened to? How much of that is actually being taken seriously? Or is that just being used to weed out the people that you don't like disagreeing with your work practices, Rajiv? Don't take what he says seriously. He's more upset at the negative coverage than he is at one of his team members dying after four months of being hired. If anyone that actually cared about their team and about their employees, and if they had someone that joined their team four months ago and then abruptly died, if they actually cared, they would actually be reevaluating their practices and talking about overhauling some of their practices and talking about making sure that there's this better work-life balance and they would be enacting these changes from the top down because nobody below them has the power to change the organization. Not for lasting measures. It's only the person at the top. And as we can see here, Rajiv will not take that initiative. Again, I do this in memory of Anna. She did not deserve to be treated like she was being treated. And I wish that her soul may rest in peace. And I wish only the best for her parents as they move forward from this tragedy and move forward in their grief. Thank you for watching and listening, and I will see you in the next one.